The chair recognized the honorable member for Kalani. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents be to lie on the table. As many. The thank chair recognizes the honorable member for Kalani. Thank you very much, Mr. Oh. Deputy. First of all, I want to thank you for allowing me to have the tea available here as I'm taking it. Um, this, thank you. Um, this yeah. sour lime for my cough that I'm having difficulty with. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's medication. Huh? Mr. Deputy, today we're speaking about building and protecting institutions. In Parliament has a responsibility to ensure that its members are accountable. Parliament is one of those branches, three branches in government, and Parliament is the legislative branch. The Prime Minister is in charge of the executive branch, and all of those institutions must be protected. Yes, sir. The Prime Minister has a responsibility to protect the office of the Prime Minister, that institution. <clears throat> the Chief Justice has a responsibility to protect the judiciary. And when a, men when a mem member threatens the credibility of an institution, that member must be dealt with appropriately. Mr. Deputy, when I was Prime Minister, I was confronted with a situation that fell under Perry Christie, who was the then Prime Minister, Prime Minister before me. And I looked at the files, and I was humble enough to call Perry Christie and ask his advice since he was dealing with that matter and how he came to such conclusion and how he think um, the matter should be dealt with. We face a similar situation. There are a few of us who belong to a particular club. Myself, Perry Christie, Brave Davis, and Hubert Ingram. And it's our responsibility to protect the integrity of the office of the Prime Minister. So Deputy, <clears throat> the member for Carmichael, the member for the minister responsible for immigration, I think should do the honorable thing and resign. And if not, the prime minister has no choice but to fire that member. It's easier if the member recognizes that he too have a responsibility to protect the office of the Prime Minister and his colleagues. And he should do the honorable thing and resign. In the absence of that, the Prime Minister has a responsibility to remove such a member. And the Prime Minister refuses to do his jobs, then it goes up the ladder. Cabinet has responsibility. But Mr. Deputy, before I get into my debate, I want to say that tomorrow we speak in Parliament. I urge the member to resign before tomorrow, or the Prime Minister has a responsibility to dismiss the, the member, or tomorrow I will bury the member. Mr. Mr. Deputy, I ask that the Prime Minister, I ask that the Prime Minister, in his capacity, he should call and seek 
Yeah, I think the the chair recognizes honorable member for West Square, Muhammad. We, I think the member should withdraw the statement that he will bury a member. Sounds like a threat, member. Honorable member. Literally, that's not me. I Thank I you. will have to present more information to ensure that the member resigns from his post. Thank you, honorable but member. I would prefer not to go that road. I would prefer that the prime minister do his job. And I recommend to the Prime Minister that just as I had called Perry Christie, who was dealing with a matter for advice, I ask and recommend that he has two former colleagues. He can call Perry Christie for advice, and he can call Hubert Ingram for advice. And I leave that matter now, and I will move into my debate. Mr. Deputy. I rise on behalf of the Kalani constituency to make my contribution to this important piece of legislation here today. In our parliamentary democracy, there are three branches of government, the judicial, the legislative, and executive branches. Our independent media function as an unofficial fourth component to this framework keeping a watchful eye on those entrusted with the offices of state. I remind the country that it was the free national movement that liberated the broadcast media from state control. The FNM also liberalized access to media ownership. And Mr. Deputy, Parliament is the legislative branch. It is the place where the people's representatives come to make laws in the promotion of the common good. The Bahamas has one of the oldest parliaments in the Western Hemisphere. Each of our three branches must have the proper independence if our system is to work as best as possible. Our parliament has evolved over the many years it was not always fully representative. It has continued to become more representative in form and practice over many centuries. With universal suffrage and majority rule, Parliament became decisively more representative. May I briefly remind the House of some parliamentary history? As noted in one of our daily newspapers, from the inception of the PLP in 1953, and most certainly from the 1956 general election until 1987, over 31 years, a Bahamian woman was never afforded nomination for a safe or winnable seat in the House by the party. It was not until 1982, two and a half centuries after the establishment of the House, that a woman was elected to the chamber. It was the Free National Movement which shattered the glass ceiling, successfully running Dame Janet Boswick. What makes the narrative, narrative more compelling is that the accomplishment came while the FNM was still in opposition and enjoyed a limited number of winnable seats. The party made a calculated gamble in the advancement of Bohemian women. Mr. Deputy, it is a fundamental feature of our democracy that our courts must be free of interference in their work of interpreting the Constitution and following ordinary laws. The executive branch has a central role in leading the country and implementing laws and regulations through the legal powers granted to it. Parliament, Mr. Deputy, must be allowed its role as lawmakers within the bounds of the Constitution and also as the institution that allocates funds for carrying out of the functions of the state. Furthermore, the administrative functions of Parliament, as it stands,
fall too much under the control of the public service and the government of the day. The executive branch and the public service should not have such influence over the administrative functions of Parliament. The Parliamentary Service Bill 2023 seeks to establish an independent service outside of the public service or any other constitutionally mandated service to enable members of the Senate and House of Assembly to perform their functions and duties and to exercise their powers under the Constitution. The bill also seeks to establish an autonomous body to be known as the Parliamentary Service Commission. And this commission will be independent of the executive branch of government and the civil service. It will have responsibility for the management of the parliamentary service. The bill will enable the Senate and the House to generate revenue and to receive grants for the use by Parliamentary Service Commission for carrying out its functions. Provisions of this bill also promote the accountability and transparency of the parliamentary service through, among others, the Public Accounts Committee. And the Commission will also promote education, technology, and citizen participation in the democratic process of the Senate and House. And this function, Mr. Deputy, is critical in promoting basic civics, including for the public and students in our schools. Too many Bahamians do not more fully appreciate how our parliamentary democracy works, including the working of parliament. And Mr. Deputy, I support this legislation as a step forward in the process of greater parliamentary independence in the continued evolution of our parliamentary democracy. Our former speaker, Halson Moultrie, <coughs> had made, had tried to bring this bill forth, and um, I think he was on the right track. We must also work to further parliamentary development and independence in other ways beyond this bill. As I mentioned in my contribution to debate on our membership to the Inter-Parliamentary Union, we must build a new parliament. The work of our parliamentary system is hampered by being in these old and inadequate buildings. And I was happy to hear the member for Fort Charlotte, Minister of Works, speaking about establishing a committee moving forward um, for the construction of a new parliament. And I am certain that that would be a beautiful edifice. And once finished in time, it would be a part of his legacy. Additionally, Mr. Deputy, we must ensure that in the mechanisms we are creating, that Parliament is properly funded to modernize its services. The parliamentary television service needs a significant upgrade. It needs new infrastructure and additional personnel. We need also to ensure it is properly staffed to create diverse and regular programming on Parliament, our history, and our system of government. Our democracy would be enriched by having a better resourced parliamentary channel that further educate, educates Bahamians on Parliament and the political process from a nonpartisan perspective. To promote civic education, I note that the FNM's last election manifesto, we pledged to, and I quote, transform the parliamentary channel into a comprehensive parliamentary broadcaster with a full scope of programming related to parliament, our system of government, Bahamian history and culture, and other public information and education programming." End quote. Mr. Deputy, this bill mentions the promotion of education, the parliamentary history of the Bahamas dates from 1729. Parliament needs the resources 
to digitize, and to create online platforms mm -hmm. so all Bohemians can have access to information about our parliamentary and legislative histories. Parliament is often referred to as the people's place. In our design of a new parliament and in the implementation of this legislation, we must always think of keeping this institution open and welcoming to the people. This includes physical access for individuals with disabilities. Bahamians should feel comfortable coming to Parliament for debates. Bahamians should easily be able to access information about the place. And students and others should continue to visit regularly and have access to educational material online, including a possible parliamentary app. I was pleased when I read the statement in the newspapers from several former speakers who were elected by each of the two main parties expressing their support for the bill. It is good that we have consensus on this matter. Mr. Deputy, as we make progress on the independence of Parliament and its administration, it is necessary for me again to call on the government to do something to give our people some relief in their electricity bill. I notice in here, Mr. Deputy, it's a little warm. You must have turned up the heat trying to save money. But in, in, as this bill is passed and independence, Parliament will be responsible. Parliament will be responsible for paying its own electricity bill. The failure of the Prime Minister to continue with the head system the FNM left in place has led to sky high prices. Bahamians are seeing what amounts to a Davis BPL tax on their bills. If the FNM process were left in place, the bills would not be this high. Why are our electricity bills going up while the cost of oil continues to go down? It is because, in my opinion, reckless, irresponsible mistakes made by the government. I want Bahamian people to listen to me carefully. Light bills are not just going up because it's summer. Bahamians are paying more because the PLP did not execute a program we had in place to buy oil cheaper and keep light bills the chair recognizes the member for Kent Island, Romkey and San Salvador. The unfortunate state of affairs is that the state of BLP, BPL, B, B, BPL. <laughs> you were right. B, yeah, yeah. No, the state, the state, no, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The state, the state, the, the state members. of BPL, right today, Right, the state of BPL and what it is today lies directly at the feet, directly, of, directly at the feet of the FNM previous administration. Yes. The Watsilla, they started off at the Watsilla plant. They are not working. They have never worked properly. I will be bringing in due course because of this constant refrain that the state of BPL today is as a result of what we are doing. I don't like looking backward. I don't. But I have to in this instance. Yes, because there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of smoke That's right. that surrounds that transaction with the Watsilla engine. They're not working. In fact, <coughs> we want to understand why. I will bring the documents as well. I want to understand why it was presented that those engines were tri fuel. If you look on BPL's website, website now, it is saying tri fuel. And we want an understanding in the last week when we are doing things to correct what's going on. That is not which throws back the plans that we had in place. I will 
in due course, point to where it is. And let me tell you, the smell is rotten. Yep. The smell yep. is rotten. Thank you, Honorable Member. Prime Minister is right when he's talking about the state of the PLP. They're in a bad state. They have to deal with that. Through the no, no, he slipped. There was a Freudian slip. There was a Freudian slip. There was a Freudian slip. I will entertain the Prime Minister in discussion with BPL, but not at this time, as I do not have the time. But I ask the Prime Minister to bring, bring, I have the floor. Bring, I have the floor. I am not yielding. Bring to this Parliament, the log for the maintenance program for Rodzilla, so that we can see. And as a matter of fact, bring to this Parliament the log of the maintenance program for the last couple of years, yes. so that we can yes. see. Yes. And table in here. Yes. Then we can enter a discussion. And now I can proceed. The Chair recognizes the, the Honorable Member for Cat Island. That is coming. Because, because he would find out, right, that those, those engines was supposed to burn a particular type of oil. I will find that the engines were not able or capable of doing so. And as a result, it has caused an exhilaration of maintenance to the extent where over $3 million have been lost in the, in the maintenance of those engines. Right? You will find that Watsilla, they're not here, but they're being paid millions of dollars. For what? When Bahamas were doing it. You find that those engines were constructed in a dilapidated building, therefore they can't run for fear that the, end, that the building will collapse on it. That's the findings, right? Never run the engines. Never run the seven engines put there, right? And yet you are, see, I didn't want to look back. I wanted to solve the problems. That's what I'm about, solving issues. Not blaming, but since you think, since you want to blame me, I'll put the facts to this country and let them know what, what failure, what abject failure. And let me I can tell you again, it doesn't smell good when you look at the sums of money being paid. And we paid for the engines. So why we are still paying them and buying the electricity from them, it doesn't smell good. Thank you, Honorable Member. This requires, this requires a thorough bill, a debate of which I am prepared to enter with the Prime Minister. I'm not going to do it at this time, but table the maintenance log that you all did not follow. Don't tell me you will. Do it. Don't tell me you will. Do it. When I come to the full facts, the full facts, the federal, the you're ready. The rating remember for a Charlotte. And you know the facts, hiding I, everything that's going on. I have not yield. I have not yield. Mr. Speaker. Bring the, bring the documents. Mr. Deputy, people are using their electri electricity just to get by in this heat. And because the PLP's failure to maintain the protection, the FNM left in place, the Hamans are being punished by this BPL tax, just as they try to stay cool. Mr. Deputy, in an op-ed I wrote that was published in the newspaper this week, I made some suggestions to the government. I did this because, in fact, the Prime Minister bears the most responsibility for lights going through the roof. It is clear. He only wanted to be Prime Minister, travel the world while the people paid the bill. I remind the country that in the BPL, in the PLP's so-called blueprint for change, the PLP promised that they would take steps to bring down the cost of electricity in 100 days. In the op-ed, firstly, I suggested that the government should go back to the Inter-American Development Bank and discuss the possibilities for putting a fuel hedge program back in place. At last check, I, I, am, I am aware of what Cambridge said. At last check, crude oil prices were trading at around $77 a barrel, which is well down from the near 120 per barrel price peak at the start of the, the war. The government must work with the experts to determine the right time and opportunities. 
to look to lock in a steady price for the oil BPL users. So we, the Bahamian consumers, can get off this surcharge roller coaster. Mr. Deputy, FNM showed how it could be done. Secondly, I suggested the government should immediately accelerate the IDB solarization program the FNM began in 2020. The government had 80 million in funding already approved and available to it to implement solar projects throughout the family islands and in New Providence. And when the Davis administration took office in 2021, the programs were well advanced. In fact, three projects had already gone to, to the contract state to provide solar energy to several government institutions. And these projects could have already been operational by now, but these were canceled. The PLP is causing Bahamian citizens and Bahamian businesses great difficulties this summer with these ridiculous high BPL bills. All Bahamians must remember when they see their out of control bills that the Prime, Ministers, the Prime Minister caused that. Rich Mr. Deputy, I support the legislation before us and I ask the Prime Minister to do something urgently on these out of control electricity bills. Mr. Deputy, as the bills go up, the people are asking for relief. And some relief must be given. Monies to assist and aid in these electric electricity bills can be moved, decrease the budget or the monies that are being spent on consultants, travel, and partying. Mr. Deputy, I support this, this bill. Thank you, Honorable Member.